All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tayemba and welcome to another wonderful live stream as we uh, reconnect the African diaspora to the African continent. And I'm here with one of my good brothers, uh, Joseph. Uh, he's gonna introduce himself. And tonight, uh, what we're gonna talk about is Africa and the diaspora connection for nation building and black power. Right, so what I want to do is uh, go right into things and uh, we're going to get our brother to do a nice introduction to tell the world about himself and things like that and uh, what you do in uh, Southern Africa. Okay, sure. So uh, my name is Joseph Sakala as Mr. Bomani has introduced me. I'm Zambian, uh, born, and raised, born and raised in Zambia, but I currently reside in South Africa. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel which goes by Joseph Sakala LV, mainly concentrating on the connection between Africans and Africans in the diaspora. That's what I do. And uh, I also venture into African news on the whole continent and uh, um, news, gossip, and all other things. Yeah. But mainly it's about Africa in the continent and Africans in the diaspora. Ed, perfect, brother. Perfect. Let me look to uh, perfect. So, how long have you been interested in this world of Africa and the diaspora? Uh, is it something new uh, or something that you've been involved in for a long time? As far as the interest of you know your folks in like in America, Jamaica, and what they're doing. Uh, the interest started growing in 2015 when I saw like our brothers from the diaspora are now trying to like get connected with the African continentals. You understand? And uh, when I saw that they are trying to come and reach out uh, to us here on the continent, I became interested and I decided to create a YouTube channel. Uh, at first I was just watching, like seeing how things are, are going, how it's done. And then two years back, I, I think one year, and some, one, one year and some months, that's when I created this YouTube channel. I decided, okay, let me concentrate more on building bridges between Africans on the continent and Africans in the diaspora and see how we can work together as a people. And perfect. Uh, so what, where you are in Southern Africa or South Africa, uh, do you meet a lot of people from the diaspora? Uh, recently, recently, man, like I'm getting a lot of connections from people from the United States who want to come on the continent. Um, I've met about 10 people now from the United States who are in Southern Africa. Because Southern Africa is like, we are interlinked from countries. It doesn't take a lot of hours to go in a different country within Southern Africa. So uh, I'm based right now in South Africa. Uh, like I said, I'm Zambian, but I'm based in South Africa. So even having these connections with my brothers from the diaspora, it gave me, you know, it, it gave me that interest, like to, to, to get to know more about our Africans in the diaspora, like the Caribbeans, Jamaica, Haiti, Hawaii, and other Caribbean countries. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. But, but in terms of like Jamaicans, I haven't met many Jamaicans apart from Zambia, but in, here in South Africa, uh, I, can see, like, I can see like a lot of African-Americans have now started like to explore the country and showing an interest here down south of Africa. Uh, yes, and uh, I've been to South Africa. That's one of the many countries that I've been to there on the continent. And uh, wherever you go, uh, you know, we do our best to just make our good connections, uh, some for long terms more than others. Uh, but as you journey around the continent, that's one of the things I always just emphasize, uh, us building that straight bridge, that straight connection, and how we can just come together. Because you're talking about... Uh, the stolen children of Africa are uh, returning and exactly. connecting for us to just do wonderful things together. Like some of the things that um, I'm interested in is beyond us tours is always this um, real estate uh, development um, from industries, manufacturing to import, export to just taking things to another level to being a people that own, you know, part of the nation, not just the uh, consumers and the workers and things like that. So. Uh, it's important that um, you know when we connect into Africa, we're looking to build a future. We're looking to just go beyond this tourism and go beyond this enjoying the continent and enjoying life. Um, so that's what we do a lot of networking on. 
I've been here to South Africa three times, uh, and it's been a um, wonderful energy, and you know, and things like that. And you know, you, you I have people from the diaspora that live there, and so we have people that live many parts of the continent, uh, and more so before than ever. It's something that we can actually work with. So that's what you know, me and your connection is all about: uh, the positive vibes and encouraging those from the African diaspora and African continent to just interconnect and do business and look out for each other because. Uh, Again, we as a people are up against, let me give people a few different countries that are dominating different parts of Africa. Uh, the Chinese, uh, the uh, Lebanese, uh, the, uh, let me see, uh, the Indians, just to name three groups uh, in general, uh, three major groups. And individuals, in order for us to tackle investments and compete with those uh, foreigners that are coming in, uh, we have to really structure ourselves in what I call black corporate economics. Uh, we have a book that I've studied over the years. And that's what it talks about. It talks about black people coming together, putting your money together and investing in different things and mainly investing in black ownership so our children can have a future. So we as a people can be enterprise and we as a people can be taken serious. So that's part of that uh, communication that uh, I have with you. And also, I sent you a video, um, and I just, um, I don't know if I sent you a brochure, but I'll share the brochure of our Black Star Pan-African community, 15 and 60 acres. You know, that's the, the level of the growth of where we have came from, being students and studying uh, repatriation and Pan-Africanism, to being an integral part of it, tourism and investment. Uh, so uh, along with uh, those things I'm talking about, and I'm looking to connect with you also in the future with these things, Share with us some of the things that you are doing in South Africa, and especially with your uh, YouTube channel and how you're marketing and connecting with the diaspora. Okay, uh, so right now I'm working on a project, like what you said. Uh, since after I saw that um, a lot of African Americans are interested in knowing about Southern Africa, so I'm working on a project of, uh, I'm in the process of registering a company uh, it's going to be a tourism company, but it will be more like a tour guide as well. So that people who want to visit, let's say, any country in Southern Africa can come through me using my company. Um, I'll be connecting them with, uh, when they travel this side, they won't have to struggle with logistics, accommodation and stuff like that. They'll have to come through me because I'll, I'll deal with those things. I've already talked with about five hotels that are willing to partner with me on this uh, project that I'm trying to embark on. So that's one of the projects that I'm doing. And when it comes to my YouTube channel, I try by all means to encourage other African Americans, African Caribbean or African Europeans to, to visit the, the motherland, to visit the continent so that we can, we can uh, connect with each other. You know, like what you said, we need people who are going to come on the continent and um, uh, assist, or should I say participate in the economy not just to come and, and uh, just do something else like what you have said yourself. You are engaging with the locals. You are building something which will benefit not only the diaspora, but also the locals coming, uh, 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 seeing what kind of business that you are doing. You understand? Uh, we need people like you who are business-minded. To be honest with you, uh, our people were not taught how to be business-minded. They were taught how to be uh, dependent. Uh, on other races. It's not a lot of people who are business-minded when it comes to, to Africans, you understand, including myself. I only started venturing into businesses like uh, entrepreneurship and doing other things after I saw like, no man, I don't want to work for, for, for like anyone else I, uh, when I can work for myself. So when you guys have got the expertise that side, when, when you come to Africa, we need your expertise, we need your experience, to teach us and by working together we're going to learn a lot from you on how to sustain a business how to start a business and how to sustain a business most of the people in africa they depend on going to work and then getting a salary at the end of the month and that's it they don't know how to create a business that can eventually grow and sustain them so that's one thing that we are willing to learn from you guys when you come on the continent we're very much eager to sit down and discuss with you these things that we can learn from you. Uh, perfect, brother. That, that's what's up, man. Uh, so do you see more people 
in um, Southern Africa open to what you're open to, that connection from the African diaspora? Yeah, exactly, man. It's, it's not only me, man. When it comes like to, I'll talk about Southern Africa, like countries where I've been to, man, people love black Americans because uh, a lot of uh, media, mainstream media, they talk like, you know, Africans don't want anything to do with African Americans or Africans in the diaspora. But that's not the case. When you land uh, on the continent, uh, specifically the Southern African part, even yourself, you see that in the kind of reception that you will receive, that really people are really into working with you guys and they are very much wanting to, to know more about you when you come on the continent. So the excitement is very much big. It's not only a few individuals. No, 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 no. It's, 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 it's like a lot. A lot of people are eager and excited seeing you guys finally coming on the continent. And of course, you, there, are the, there are those people you know, who have problems, uh, a few individuals, we call them tribalists. Those tribalists, they also have problems with fellow Africans who are not from their tribe. So we don't concentrate on those kind of people because we know that they won't contribute anything positive to, to what we're trying to create here or to, to the bridge that we're trying to bridge between the two um, a, 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 a people from the diaspora and from the continent. Absolutely, brother. And it takes uh, that vision of us as a people who want to see something happen, happen. Because one of the issues that we have in society is just because you know, people look just like you and I don't mean that we're for the same efforts and energy. Um, like I see your energy, you know, you're literally for the connection. And you see my energy, I'm literally for that connection. Africa and the diaspora connecting to compete with the likes of the nations I mentioned and everyone else. So we as a people can be able to sustain ourselves and also create opportunities for our own children and our own people. So that's where I'm at. Um, and I'm on it on a Pan-African level or a global level uh, because, you know, it's what it is. And that's what Pan-Africanism I represent. So people like me and yourself um, has to connect more and more. And that's how I built my network in Africa. I remember this traveling from 2004, you know, the first country is Senegal and then Egypt. And then building the connection in business to where you have people in the country doing business. So it's something that, you know, you have to put work into and things like that. And I'm telling individuals out there, there's no shortcuts in this. You have to put the work into it and things like that. So people see me and they're like, how does this guy have business and things like that in Africa? Is because I started at a young age of 26, now I'm 44. And so you're working on these things every day, all throughout the day, all throughout the year. So... You become proficient at these things and you're out there now just making business happen and things like that. And you're trying to just influence other people to just get into the game of the world of Africa tours and investment because you tour Africa and enjoy the beauty of it. You make your connections and then you make your investments, whether it's, um, you know, have invest, whether it's investment like the stocks, bonds, treasury bills, you know, using your bank account or whether you're just getting land investment or, or any kind of real estate or management or just, the vision is open because once you get to the continent, many things may just open up as you just look, you know, and you may see opportunities because you're coming from somewhere different. So that's the importance of the tour and then the importance of the connection to investment. So that's what we have set up um, in Ghana, Tanzania, Senegal, and the Gambia as far as tourism right now, as far as my schedule. But um, Ghana is the only true investment that we really have because we have real estate investment. But is, you know, it's not something that you want to run around all over the African continent and do. So, you know, we want to build our base of operation right there in Ghana to where we have our business center. What you're looking at right now is my current uh, business center where I run all of the business I do, Africa for the Africans, uh, Black Star Pan-African Community, and Bomani Technology and Business um, Services or Enterprise. And so as you grow in business, you want to train and educate the future. Uh, so... That's what the, um, the land project is. It's to where we have land, we're putting our money together and we're building institutions and things so all of our children benefit. And that's the thing. So individuals don't all, always have to do our way as far as getting land. They can move into a community, move into a village. It's all up to them. People have to do what connects to them. But the most important thing is actually doing it. Uh, so those are some of the things that I wanted to share with you about what we're doing um, and 
you know, not sure if you've seen some of our tour groups, but I have tons of video on YouTube where we just in so many different countries. And I believe in this uh, from 2004, just to document as much as possible and show it to the world that we're in Africa. We're having a good time. We're connecting. We're learning about our roots and culture. We're around our own people. We're not having any troubles and we're having a good time. Uh, very important. Uh, so look forward to definitely connect with you on some of those things. Uh, now, uh, most definitely, most definitely, man. Uh, you know, people like you and others, I, I always say this, when you have got that courage and desire to do something, you achieve great things, you understand? Africa is a land of opportunities, that's for sure. You understand? And, 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 and let not people discourage you because when they see what you have achieved, they know they cannot achieve because they don't have the guts to do it. It takes money, it takes dedication, it takes someone's spirit to say, okay, let me do this. You know, it's, it's not easy because a lot of people think you can just pack up and go to Africa. Then you have it your way. Then it's like that. Then everything is rosy. No, it takes hard work. Like what you said, you put your effort into it. You make the right connections. You do the right things. Then things eventually they'll start running smoothly. You understand? So there are people out there who think like you just come to Africa, then you do one or two things and it's all roses and, and everything is fine. It doesn't work like that. It takes dedication. It takes you to be committed. It takes you to be uh, uh, willing to get involved with the locals in that area of which a lot of people are not willing to do that. Uh, perfect, brother. And, and these are some great advice. So along with th those great advice, uh, do you have um, any additional advice uh, for those who are actually interested in living and doing business in Africa uh, from the diaspora. Exactly, man. Uh, people in the diaspora, listen to this. I've followed Mr. Bomani for a long time, like watching his videos, and he's doing a tremendous job. Let me tell you something. If you want to do something in an area which you don't know, most of the things you need to ask people who know that area. And who else apart from this man right here? This man is a hard worker. If you want to invest in Africa, do not be discouraged by what people or by what, what people are trying to say about this man. To be honest with you, he is loved in Africa. Check all the countries where he has gone through. You won't even see any complaint from the locals, which tells you something. If someone goes in a, in a country or any continent or any uh, company, whatever place that person goes to, and there are no complaints, about the person, it shows what kind of individual he is. So if there is someone who wants to invest in the land, on the continent, follow Mr. Bowman's example and ask for some advice if you can, if you are willing to do that. But to be honest with you, if you want to venture into something, follow someone who has done it before. It will be much easier and you won't have those risks that you may encounter if you don't follow or consult someone who knows that it is very important for you guys to invest on the continent because Africa is the future and we want you guys to be here. So you cannot just pop up and come without having a plan first. So if you can invest, invest on the continent, that's for sure. And you have got the man right here who has done it, who is still doing it and who is still going to continue to do it. I absolutely, brother. Appreciate your energy, and uh, thank you for this uh, checking out the flow for what um, we've been doing over the years. Our main thing is always just making that connection. You know, it's kind of like if you don't keep the bridge strong, you know, we lose our connection. Uh, you know, it's th uh, that simple. So just trying to just get more of us focus on what's going on because while we're not focusing, you have all different nations getting more involved in the content than ever before you know you know and you know when i first started going to ghana it was like a few airlines only went to ghana now you now you look up almost all different kind of nations and you know with you know, ghana's new airport so people not just coming in to, to do tourism you know when you see all these other people they're also coming in to do what business right a high level of business so you see there's more you know more tourism for us but also more business interest for others so we have to do a little bit more to keep up with that so <clears throat> people like myself have taken bold steps to acquire land to get business people involved and yes it made this 
you know, may cause other people to just have a level of jealousy, envy, and hatred and things like that. But only thing I would tell individuals that one thing about me is we do business, we cover ourselves, and we follow the rules and flow of business, you know, and things like that. So that's why on our website, Africa for the Africans.org, we have all of the details for you know the info, the price, and more if you're interested in our community in Ghana. And this is also information to help you make your decisions if you look to do something with other people. Because what we're doing is laying out all of the details, our business and corporation here in America uh, for Africa for the Africans, our business and corporation there in uh, Ghana uh, for Black Star Pan African community, all of the legal documents as far as our survey, uh, different paperwork and sample paperwork. And we also have a getting started information that we send via email where you just send everyone all of the, the legal documents, the contracts, uh, the lease and things like that. Very important, you know, and we're just taking it another step because a lot of times when you're dealing with land investment, people tend to just not be clear about what's clear. So over the, the, the two and a half years since we've been building this community, we have done public conference call, going through details and explaining to people, these are the procedures and process to do. And the reason for that is um, transparency to the highest level. That way someone can say, hey, if I'm offering and sharing this project to you, Joseph, and I send you all of the information from the website to all the information via email, it's up to you to speak to your wife, your family members, your cousin, anyone of interest, your attorney, whoever you want, to, or even the people in that country that runs those operations, the courts, the lands commission. Because one of the things about these legal documents that we have Everything is signed, stamped, and things like that. I'm serious about my art form and craft. The website Africa for the Africans represent, you know, from 2006 to now, our world of Africa tourism investment, again, you know, and literally being clear on it, showing you the history and the documentation and things like that. So that's one of the things I started doing because I started realizing that people are having trouble with land. And I'm telling individuals, do not get involved with anyone with land or any kind of business, unless they show you all of these legal documents. I've showed people my entire staff and crew and admin people from the attorneys to uh, surveyors, to uh, consultant, to my business advisors and the people that I have on the ground. When you see any videos, they see me and my unit of people moving along and things like that. Uh, so we're in and out of the, the country doing the right thing and we don't have any trouble in the country. So if people hear certain things, I tell them, Reach out to me if you're looking to do business with me. Come to the source because a lot of times you're going to see information that's not factual online because people are so trying to get subscribers, likes, and shares, and things like that. Uh, I tell people personally, everyone can do what they want to do, but my channel is just what it is. I have, I have business people coming here. All the videos that we create and the playlists we create, we sit here, watch the videos, and we do business and networking and things like that, and we use them for our research. So I'm not into monetizing them. They're just playlists where you click on play and they'll play a whole ent entire video. Say example, based on the land, there's a hundred videos from when we first went there, saw the land, interviews of the chief, like full transparency, brother, to the highest level. And that's one thing that I'm showing people because we have stepped the bar up. My, my organization and my brothers and sisters in the early 2000s, we basically build what you have as a modern day reconnect to Africa 21st century movement by literally laying down the foundation of these things. Uh, so we have stepped it up now to where we're getting into land and we're doing so well. We started bringing in haters and envious people, which is fine. But it's like, I always tell people, if anybody want to challenge and test me, just come out with us, just, just do real work. Don't lie about things. Come out with research and proof of things. So, uh, you know, some people may see information that well what's what's good what we're doing in ghana is not organized but i'm telling people go get your attorney and prove it go get the professionals in that country and prove it no one can prove anything this has been two and a half years since i've been doing this business and people have challenged me from the beginning because they're 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 frustrated that they want to do what we're doing and i'm being honest with you uh they want to they want to acquire land and get a group of people i have 50 plus people in our group Black Star Pan African community, and I have a whole list of possible people. Uh, once we get more and more things going, 
more and more people you know, will commit because that's how these projects work. When you build them from the foundation, you'll get interest and people commit. But over a period of time, when more and more things are in place, more and more people join. So I'm a person that believe in building the foundation of things. So even on our first time when I went to Ghana, it was just like eight of us. And we created like a very cheap, simple budget. And it was mainly just people I was close with. But that also built a foundation to how we did tours from time went on because we was able to just start and grow and grow and grow. So I have a lot of different information and a different advice and different uh, connections to help anyone that's interested in, in doing it. Uh, so I want to open things up now um, as we've been talking for a good 25 minutes. See if you want to go into some other conversations. Um, yeah, definitely, man. What you talked about people who are very much envious and uh, want to discredit the good work that you've done or trying to uh, uh, tarnish your name. Uh, those guys, we call them the house Negroes, you understand? And there is one in Europe. Uh, a lot of people know about him. I'm not going to go deep into that, but he's a house Negro. You know, house Negroes, they hate anything that has to be with black but they are very much excited with anything that has to be white. They want to do things to please their masters. They want to be liked. In fact, they wish they were white themselves. You understand? So these people, we don't need to pay much attention on them because we know that they are crazy lunatics. They don't have what it takes to do what other people are doing on the continent. All they do is sit back in the, in the corner of their room and criticize. They know that they won't come, they won't have a chance to come to Africa. They know they will never come to Africa. So what do they do? They sit back, criticize, and talk about people in the room, in the comfort zone. They don't have what it takes to come to Africa and make a difference. So no matter how much people want to discredit you, please, my brother, continue the good work. There are a lot of people out there who want to work with you, people out there who want to connect with you people out there who want to do real good things with you. And in terms of land in Africa, people, you need to realize this. If someone is doing a crime in Africa, authorities will be on their tails. Authorities will pounce on them. But you never hear such on people who are trying to do good on the continent. And ask yourself this question. Why is it that people are trying to do good on the continent? Always, always, this individual wants to talk bad about them. Why? This is simple. Number one is not try is not wanting to unite the diaspora and the continentals because once the diaspora and the continentals unite, we are going to achieve great things together. Number two is envy and jealousy. They wish themselves they were in that in those shoes, but they know they cannot do it because they are cowards and they don't have what it takes to be committed and to do what these guys are doing. We highly recommend what these guys are doing. There is nothing illegal here. There is nothing fraudulent here. It's just a crazy lunatic in Europe trying to do what he's doing, tarnishing people's name without proof, just talking anyhow. And that is what we need to reject. And I urge my fellow African brothers, let's not entertain such people. We have been separated with our people for a long time. Now that it's time to unite, then we get these house Negroes trying to disturb the movement and the building bridges that people are trying to do. So let us not encourage negativity in our community and let us embrace positivity and positive things that people are trying to bring on the continent. If someone is trying to do something or they are doing something which will benefit the locals financially, I don't see a problem with that, especially if it's even done in the right way like what our brothers and sisters are doing those ones who are trying to make a difference people who criticize they are hypocrites and they are cowards because they won't have anything to do with the continent but they will criticize people who are trying to make a change so where would you rather be someone who wants to make a change or someone who wants to destroy criticize without doing anything on the continent so think about that guy you're, you're, you're a warrior brother i love the energy i love the energy and that's uh, what we're talking about as a build up our connection to talk about how we're connecting from the African diaspora to the African continent. And I'm telling you, since I've been 
connecting and making this move. Even from the beginning, when I start this business, Africa for the Africans, I used to have people here, um, you know, where I'm at in America, tell me, you know, why you guys are wasting your time and have so much focus on studying about African, thinking that you're going to go to Africa and build these business enterprise and these connections. But, you know, you know, you, you understand where they, they're coming from. They just, you know, they don't know any better. They're, they're, they're not opening their minds. What you explain to them is that we live in a country where you're limited on what you can do. Uh, and, and, and that limitation varies based on what you're talking about. But as far as building independent enterprise that are black owned, black empowered and things like that, it's, you're very limited. It's just what it is. Uh, you, you're in a system where those things limit you naturally. So when you're talking about making a move to a country like Ghana and you're embraced by the people in the country, that's why we keep on going. I've been there for 20 times over 15 years, taking over 500 people. So once you start going there, you know, you start learning about different things. And when, one of the things you realize is you see more and more of us from the diaspora leaving and going, but then some of us falling on hard times or coming back where the money is funny and things is not going right and you have to come back. That's because we don't have a level of infrastructure. They are set up to help anyone from the diaspora. You know, it's like, it's kind of like once you get there and things don't work, you're on your own. You know, you may have to go to the American embassy to, to ask to just get you back, which they'll help you get back because I've had people come back homeless, broke, you know, and things like that. I mean, these are unfortunate things. And I'm not saying it to just say anything bad about anyone. I'm saying it to say that let's not destroy our lives by just giving up everything that we work for in America and just feel like we're just going to go to Africa and make it happen. We need unions and we need organizations and we need help. And that's what our Black Star Pan-African community does. We have an office right there in Jahadzi, Ghana, right across from the Black Star Pan-African community because we're still building and developing our land. So across from us is a, is a you know, not completed um, community, but it's a community that, uh, you know, we're able to just uh, lease a house and it has other houses there. So that's also where our temporary members can stay for a year or so while they build their homes. So we're trying to set things up to where you can literally just have a connection to where if something goes wrong, you can just say, hey, Bomani, um, you know, this is going on. And, you know, and we just say, okay, well, let me just, um, you know, we got this going on where we can assist you, where you can just, you know, come on the community and participate in, you know, whatever we have, you know, it's a, you're building a community with as a business and a community center. The business center has a lot to do with all of the business I'm named to you. I can't do all of those things to the highest level by myself or with my small crew. So you're going to need to train young minds and things like that. And you're going to need people you can use to do certain things, especially if they can help you get more business. So you're in a position to where you can offer people assistance and help. You have homes and you have guest homes and things like that. You can house people and you can look out for people. Not saying it's a shelter or anything, but it's like we have very talented, skilled people who try to just get there and make it on their own. Very brilliant. But it takes us coming together. And that's what I talk about, the blueprint for black power. It, de it deals with... Uh, economics to the highest level it deals with us literally um, understanding that we have to work these uh, game plans so that's what this uh, operation represent and the issue that it becomes now is unfortunately not everyone is welcome it's a pan-african community so it's for black people in african diaspora and african continent you know we have people from ghana and other countries in the group but uh what we are we're organizing is something where you have to be like I mentioned, Pan-African and true Pan-African. You know, we talk about black power nation building. So certain behaviors and certain situations is not accepted. You know, we can't have people with, uh, you know, uh, you know, a black man needs to be with a black woman as far as what we're building. I can't tell people how to live their lives. If they want to do something else, that's your business. I'm never going to knock that hustle. You know, but in my culture and in my family, and I'm talking about my family, that's all of us, you know, you know, all of us are mainly born in Jamaica and then we have, you know, people of first generation and things like that, like my son and like, you know, my younger brothers and sisters and things like that. But it's like, you, you're literally building something for your family and your closest brothers and sisters. This is a private organization and a private operation and things like that you also invite other people in that are, that have that mindset and things like that. So along that way, you're building that energy. You do have people who are not going to all be a part of it and they're going to fall out. But the worst thing is, you know, everybody's signing private agreements. You cannot 
you cannot disclose any information and issues that you have what's going on publicly. This is not one of those situations. Everyone signs a contract and we go by contracts. So if you say, hey, I'm no longer going to be a part of this operation, you sign to it as non-refundable and refundable. The non-refundable, you're not getting back. And the refundable will work on making installments to get to you until you're, it's sent to you. And then we'll just work out all the details to just work it out as far as the land papers and things like that. But, so we try to find a way to make sure that if someone makes a decision and they don't want to move forward, we give them a way out uh, where they, you know, where they that's not losing everything. But at the same time too, we have it set up to where people have to just follow rules and regulations as far as what they're signing and agreeing to. That's the most difficult thing when it comes to business. And I'm sharing this also from a perspective of educating people because these things are what cause confusion. Now I see people airing out their business that's all online and things like that. You know, when you have a private operation and a private group, you know, you have people that's going to instigate to get you to say, Hey, come tell me this business so we can go get this guy right there. And I'm one of the people that knows people are going to do that. So what you do, you have all of your things in place. So this is the things that I'm recommending to those out there. Cause I'm seeing a lot of people that's looking to move from, you know, from the diaspora to Africa being attacked by, you know, many different people and things that, and pe people talking down to them and just, you know, and I want to encourage them. Let's keep fighting and keep doing what you're doing. You're changing the, the, the flow of our, our connection because at one point you didn't have this many people being interested in making a move to Africa. So we set up what we set up the way we need to set it up, but we can only do so much. And other people, if they have different ideas, you know, they can set those things up. So maybe someone has an idea where they want to do a repatriation community based on based on health and wellness, and they want to be, have it be by the beach and things like that, and they just want to have certain things. It's important that individuals be clear about their requirements and be clear about what they're getting into to make sure that they fit and then follow the rules, the regulations, and the leadership and the organization and things like that. Because I'm one of the people that when we're running business, I won't let disgruntled and, and 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 crazy people who think that they can just take over the operation and destroy it because usually the people who want to take over your operation and your organization they, they're not going to try to build anything they're basically uh informants and agents that's in, involved or maybe they're just people who are confused and not sure what things are and that's what i'm telling everyone whether it's this community or this tour or what we're doing and what other people are doing be clear to read and be clear what you're doing and then when you have certain things that, you know, you're not clear on, communicate with the people that's going on, that's organizing things and make sure be respectful and try to work things out with people. Stop putting out your business out there online and having people take advantage of you. And I'm going to go into the names and go into certain things now. And the, the, the highlight of the person that we are looking at as one of the most dangerous black devil and race trader is the unapologetic Negro Pian. And it's something that me, you, and many other people are having in common that's trying to build this bridge. He's becoming one of the most dangerous threats because he does not afraid to lie. This person will lie on everything. My chief right now is frustrated to where he literally went up to the police station, the Lands Commission, and showed him and proved to them all of his legal stuff because he saw the video of himself and he's embarrassed because he's a judge. He's a very important business figure. And his face is plastered like he's some, you know, some clown that knows how to do business. No one can run us out of our own town. We run that town. You know, we're the people that's building business in the town, creating opportunities and things like that. All of the paperwork I mentioned to people is 100% real. I cannot forge anything is what he's telling people. These are the two greatest lies ever. You know, a chief being run out of town because he's a criminal and a myself forging legal paperwork. I have people living on the land, building on the land. We have a connection between us and the Lands Commission, which is our surveyor. You know, these are legal paperwork. We have an attorney that puts his law firm on the line, sign stamp deal. And we have another attorney that you know I have right now that's looking over everything. And then he can't see anything that's not right, anything that needs to be touched up or clear up. He's working on it. So these are things that I'm proud to say that no matter what the haters and the crabs in the barrel come at you, you're standing strong and you're knocking out and showing documentation and things like that. So I have a nice little playlist on the unapologetic Negro Pian with all of our videos and our response and all of our documentation and things like that. 
out there. I put some of your videos on there because they also stand up for some of our people from the diaspora because we need people to stand up for them. So let me um, open things up for you for you to share why you feel so strong to stand up for people that have been bullied by someone that some people won't challenge or won't stand up against because we're going to fight this fight and we're going to shut them down. Exactly. You see, an apologetic European is a liar, is, is a traitor to our kind, is a disgrace. I'm sorry to use this kind of word, but that's a fact. The guy is a liar. He can lie. He can lie. I can tell you the guy is a liar, is a disgrace, and is a guy who doesn't have even a single fiber of shame in him. Imagine lying about a chief who is respected in a country. Lying about a chief, and the chief is a judge, and then you go and lie about such kind of a person without even proper evidence. This guy goes after women, he pulls down women, especially black women. You know, Pan-Africanism, guys, don't be deceived. Pan-Africanism is not for everyone. A black king must be with a black queen. Anyone who goes and marries Becky and says he's part of the black community of Pan-Africanism, that's a lie. Your wife shows where your allegiance is. That's a fact, because you are one with that woman. So if you decide to marry Becky and say, I'm part of this, trying to liberate Africans from being deceived or whatever, that's a lie. When you come online and you talk trash and nonsense about other black people without shame, that simply shows you what kind of a person the dude is. Someone who goes after women, destroy women and pull them down without any shame. That shows you what kind of a person that dude is. I mean, absolutely. We need... Look what he did to our ears and the, the gamb and uh, the black acres of the gamb. It's two specific people of many people we're going to talk about. Not, 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 not only those guys, even, even Blackzit. Even Blackzit. He goes and talks nonsense about people without proper evidence. Just because like what you explained, when you are dealing with these kind of things, there are some confidential things that are signed on a contract. You understand? Some things are non-refundable. And when you are dealing with Issues with finances, this is a fact. Even banks got problems with money, with their clients. Big corporations got problems with money. Anything that has to do with money, there are complications and there are some issues. That does not mean that things are not okay or things are bad. You understand? But it takes advantage of such kind of people, these devils that he works with, those who breach contracts. When you sign a contract of non-refundable, do you sign without reading or you sign it, but once it fails, then you, you, you go and try to spike the person that you are trying to work with. It doesn't work like that. And it takes advantage of this kind of people. This guy is a traitor. Let me tell you something. He is a traitor, a shame to our kind. And he's not going to come to Africa because he knows that he has pissed off a lot of people. And when he comes to Africa, he knows what he's going to get. That one, I can assure you, he will never step a step in Africa. He will just be in the corner of his room where he talks trash, talk nonsense, and continues spilling this nonsense. He needs to be stopped. He needs to be stood against and tell him what you are doing is not right in the community or black community. And guys, what he did to ES was very wrong. When our sister needed us most, when she needed us most, where were we? When he trashed her, left, right, center, there were some black devils who were even happy about it. We need to protect each other from these people who are devils. These are not for us. During the slave trade, you guys in the Americas, you know more uh, about this because you experienced that life. These house Negroes, they want to bring down other black people and please their masters. You understand? They want to be white themselves. That's why they'll go as far as marrying white women. And not only white women, but white useless women. You understand? So guys... Be vigilant. This guy is a danger to our community. This guy is a danger to our movement as a uniting uh, for, for, for people in the diaspora and on the continent. He is a very, very big danger. And you think like he's joking. He's not joking. He's on a mission. And his mission is to destroy the movement and the bridging of bridges between Africans and the diaspora. And he needs to be stopped. He needs to be stopped.
talking things or telling people things without proper evidence or without proof. Come on, who does that? And he's very relaxed about it. He's very relaxed. He has no shame. He himself is a scammer, he's a criminal. He needs to tell us why was he deported from the United States. He needs to tell us that. Instead of him trying to discredit people who are trying to do a good work on the continent. One of his videos, he was saying he's moving to the continent, he's moving to the continent. Then later on, he changed and says, no, I'm not going to move to the continent because I have it good in Europe. I'm enjoying my life. It simply shows what kind of mentality that he has. He don't have a heart for us Africans. He don't have a heart for us African diasporas. He's whitewashing his family. His allegiance is with Nephilim. His allegiance is to where his wife comes from. He doesn't have any fiber or moral fiber to say or any respect of any black person. That one, I always say this. He can put you, they put you and they put a white person here. He's going to throw a black person under the bus. That's the type he is. Those of you who have watched uh, Django and Cap uh, Unchained, I mean, Django Unchained, the character Samuel L. Jackson portrayed or acted, that's the character of an apologetic Negro peon in real life. That guy is a traitor. That guy hasn't got any good uh, uh, intentions of black people. When you guys go to him and complain and then he starts making videos, do you think like he's trying to protect you? He's not trying to protect you. What he's doing is trying to trash other black people using your information and then at the end of the day, start laughing at you. So guys, be vigilant. We need to unite more than ever. There are, yes, there are things which don't run smoothly. Yes, we do make mistakes. We are people. When, 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 when did we start becoming perfect? We are not robots. Him, he wants people to be perfect. No, when we are dealing with finances, when we are dealing with people, there mustn't be any mistakes. There mustn't be any uh, 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 bad things going. There mustn't be any small, small, you know, complications. Everything must be run smoothly. We are not robots. That's why we are called humankind, human beings. We, are, we make mistakes, and those mistakes are bound to happen. But we need to correct these mistakes and move on, find common ground, and move on as a people instead of dishing our dirty laundry on the internet by this traitor called the unapologetic Negropian. He pissed me off. He made a, a very bad video about me uh, and saying I, 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 I hate his guts. Well, as I was just trying to show people the truth about this guy. Let me tell you something. I'm going to fight this guy to the last drop of my blood. And it's not only me. There are other African continentals who are not happy with what he's doing. He's trying to prevent the movement for us to unite as a people, and that we are not going to tolerate or accept. Yes, brother, you're on fire, man. We don't want you to stop. Uh, appreciate <laughs> what you're sharing because that's what we got to do. We got to be real because you're fighting for people who can't fight for themselves. And thank you for standing up to the people that you just mentioned and all the other people uh, that this bully is going around, pushing around. Uh, so we're going to give him a taste of his own medicine and we're going to hit him from every angle and uh, shut him down because we have so much dirt on him. It's just hard to get some of the stuff out because he can't really put certain things out because, you know, it's the Internet and uh, YouTube. Hey bro, uh, no, no, you know, people, people, they sent me a lot of dead such that you get disgusted. Like you can even feel like 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 throwing up when you when you see what this devil Internet does. You understand? It, it, man, it's so disgusting. You know, it. It, it simply shows that we, we, we are not the same, you understand? If you are saying you've got debt on him, but you cannot put it on the internet, it shows the kind of caliber or the kind of man that you are. A man, a black man, a black king with morals, you understand? A black man with morals. A black man who protects other black people, but him is not like that. I've got a lot of information about him. Imagine people from Austria sending me information about him. You understand? People from the UK sending me information about him. You know, and I'm going to make a video about him, about his company, his bogus company called uh, Oversight, which he registered on, on a, a, a dry cleaning company, a dirty dry cleaning company. I've got images. I've got all those things. You understand? I've got all his, 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 his sponsors that he runs. I've got all those things. But I cannot put them on the internet because I'm not like him. But he needs to be stopped. And we're not going to stop until... I told him even myself, if you don't stop 
talking trash about people who want to build something better or something good on the continent, I'm not going to stop condemning what you do. I'm going, I'll, I'll make sure I'll be a thorn in his flesh until he stops his nothing. Uh, yes, I don't know if he's going to stop. Uh, but brother, I am out with you on that. Uh, he literally is someone that is just literally just uh, sick and needs mental help because um, I think he just enjoys the money that uh, he gets paid. Uh, you know, because nowadays you got paid traders, paid uh, race traders, and things like that. So uh, it's one of those things where I encourage people do not send this guy any kind of money and do not encourage him because people like him are going to destroy the future of your children. No, he's not worried about the about the black race, this, this traitor. He's not worried. I want I can assure you because what he's doing is that he's whitewashing his family. You understand? His, his kids. If you see his kids, how the, his kids look, to be honest, those types, they don't go for black women. So if they go for Becky like what he did, <laughs> you know, it only, it, only takes, it only takes three generations uh, to, to whitewash a family. You understand? Me, if I take Becky, my kids take another Becky, my, ki my kids' kids take a Becky, then the family is whitewashed. That's what he's doing. He's destroying his ancestral lineage. He doesn't care about black people, this guy. He doesn't. Yes, and he has proven that, and um, that's one of the situations we have. So I'm telling people, family, uh, this is real. We're not just here, just uh, making this up. And uh, yeah, you, and you just 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 to, po to point out something, just to so point yeah. out something. If there is anyone who's sending this guy money, like what Mr. Bomani said, please do not send this guy any money, because when you send him money, you are simply encouraging him to continue doing what he is doing, and that is destroying the black movement, destroying the black family, destroying the, the connection between Africans and the diaspora that we are trying to build. So if you are one of those people sending this idiot, this traitor sending you money, don't do that. Stop sending this guy money or else you'll be held accountable as well as one of the people contributing to the destruction, the route of destruction that he has taken. Absolutely, brother. That, um, that's, that's right on point. And uh, that's one of the things that we mentioned. Um, you mentioned to me that uh, uh, you have your employment and you have your career and you have your business. And that's the same thing that you'd hear from me. Have you ever heard it mentioned to you where he works at? What's his position? What's his employment? What does he do? He's broke, that guy, dude. He's, he's, he, re he relies on, on his woman. He's broke. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't have any property. I'm sure where he's staying is renting. He has made YouTube his work. Some of us, this we do this too. To connect with people, you understand. <laughs> you do it for yourself as a business and, uh, and to connect Africans and the diaspora. But him, we have taken it as work. He's a broke Negro in Europe who doesn't have anything but trashing people. He doesn't have got work. That one, I can assure you, he relies on his wife, who is an adult entertainer, and is enjoying that money. That's what he does. He doesn't work, this guy. He has no job. That is why, you know, if, if a man can go as far as talking trash about women, he doesn't have got time to work. He doesn't have time for work. He has time to gossip, to sit in a corner, excuse me, and say, what am I going to talk today about this woman? What am I going to talk today about Mr. Bowman? Whatever. Because he has got that energy, he has got that time. Someone who has who's committed and has got work, he will, never have got, he, will never, he will never venture in those kind of things. He will never have that kind of time. It takes a broke ass, unemployed Negro in Europe to do that. The guy is broke. That's a fact. Absolutely, brother. And that's what we're telling people, family. If you want to help him, just help him get some employment or something else. Give him something positive to do because it's kind of like uh, he's one of them people where since he has nothing better to do, he just finds the most destructive things to do and things like that. Yeah. So, I, uh, But one thing he doesn't understand is that people like myself, yourself, and uh, there's a whole lot of other people out there, they're not going to tolerate this uh, kind of nonsense and embarrassment to the people in the diaspora. There's no one of us or anyone judged to where I put your business or anyone business out there, secret meetings that people should not be having online. You know, like I saw one and I used some of the videos because the lady was explaining to him because he kept on trying to get her to believe that uh, there's a guy out there in Ghana forging documents. And she was like, even if he's forging documents, they need to do their research and take it to the Lands Commission and take accountable. So I'm telling people that that's the way that you prove these people wrong. These people will tell you, all kind of lies, but tell you them to prove it. 
So what people need to do is literally just start doing their own research and things like that because it's like so easy to believe these lies. So he think it's over, but um, we're not stopping and uh, we're going to keep on educating people about black devils and race traders because those are the people that literally on the thumbnail, you see two people. You see Marcus Garvey and Kwame Nkrumah. Now, when to Marcus Garvey and Kwame Nkrumah, both of them were you know, basically overthrown by, you know, black devils. That's what you, you can say, or basically sabotage in so many words. So those are the things that uh, we explain to individuals. Like, this is real. These are things that continue to happen over and over. The only difference is that we know about it. So we're going to defend ourselves and put ourselves in a good position to make sure that we're successful. So that's what I've done with our business. I've made sure that I've done everything legally. And I've made sure that I put all of the business people in place, especially the attorneys that handle all of the legal stuff that can represent me at any time in Ghana because I live in America and I'm moving around different countries and things like that. So it's a smart way to do business. And you learn that based on what happened in previous times and how, you know, example, people were sabotaged from trying to just bring us together so we can have something. And that's what I'm about. And that's what I've always been about uh, from studying in 2003 for, and then from 18 straight years after that, literally being actively engaged and to connecting and being a part of an active movement. So family, it's one of those things that we just want to educate you about that also and educating you why and how we're connecting together and things like that. So uh, we're using that situation not to just sit here and talk about a degenerate bum that needs to actually get a job. But use him as a real, real situation because there's other people like him. They're just, they're just one or two of them, but they know they're not significant. This guy go as far as taking it to the whole level of attacking a group of people in one movement. I mean, that is a specialty, right? A group of people that are looking to connect back and forth to Africa and try to find he has not said anything positive about anyone. So can all of them be bad people? Absolutely not. So we want people to use their critical thinking when it comes to this situation, because one thing we're not going to destroy is that bridge and that connection from Africa to the diaspora. We're not going to let individuals, whether locally or internationally, get involved and get in the way. So we as a people that are in that energy movement must stop them and educate them, say, hey, you're destroying our future. Step out the way or we're going to run you over. Exactly, exactly. We have to, we have to. This, this, this guy... This guy's got no shame. You know, in Africa, we, we, we've got morals. We've got uh, a way whereby when you see that this guy is becoming too uh, vocal, we've got a way of dealing with such kind of people, you understand? And, and, and we're going to deal with him. That one is, is a fact. It's not a threat, but it's just a fact because he needs to stop what he's doing. What he's doing is not right at all. You know, it's not only... Is, is, is busy targeting people like what you said who are trying to do good on the continent. You understand? If he knows that this guy has got the potential to do something on the continent and to change a narrative or to build up something positive, not only which will benefit the locals and the, the diaspora, when he sees that, oh, the dude just becomes like an animal and create all sorts, sorts kind of lies about people and, 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 and what you said, the danger about this guy it doesn't care and it doesn't matter to him so long as he has put something about someone. He'll create lies, and I mean lies from the pit of hell. Then he puts it on his platform. Then after that, he'll even sleep nicely as if nothing ever happened. This guy is mentally disturbed. Very, very, very much mentally disturbed. And he needs, he needs to see a specialist for mental health. Otherwise, he'll run mad. He needs help. So help him, guys. Help him. But as far as we are concerned, we'll fight him to the end. If he doesn't stop, we won't stop. If he stops, we stop. We are up for the challenge. And now when I told him, if you don't stop your nonsense, I won't stop condemning what you do. And that's what I'm doing. As we are all about positive vibes, all about connecting with the diaspora, all about breeding bridges, all about doing great things as a people, as one. You understand? You cannot be pan-Africanism. I repeat again, you cannot be pan-Africanism if you have got ties with Becky. That's a fact. So guys, please don't listen to these traitors. Don't. Don't. 
Absolutely, brother. So th th that's it, family. So my brother uh, Joseph Sakala has given you a taste of um, uh, what he has been uh, connecting with as far as the Africans uh, in the diaspora and also defending a situation against um, someone that's dangerous, looking to stop and discourage people. So, you know, we just salute you, brother. I'm trying to get you to put up your YouTube page on the screen so we can show it. Uh, if you want to type it in the screen, can you? Or maybe I can, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll find it and post it real quick. All right, perfect. I got your link. Let me post this. Perfect. Yes, brother, man. So, um, but uh, there we go. All right, that's probably not. Let me find a different way to do this. And also, I see you doing our uh, news. Uh, so it's um, connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything, anything I that has to do with anything that has to do with Africa as a continent, like the happenings in different parts of Africa. Uh, I I don't concentrate in Arabic nations. I normally concentrate where our people are, like melanated people in the continent. So in those regions, I I take like top stories in those regions. Then I put it out there. I normally do Africa news on Saturdays. So if you want to know what is happening on the continent, then Saturdays, that's where you find such kind of content on my channel. Yes, man, you're not playing, man. That, that's serious, man. Uh, you're trying to get involved in this, uh, really connecting people. And that's all good. Yeah. So where do you get most of your research from when you do your shows? Uh, when I'm doing uh, my news, what I do is I go to... Uh, I, so some of the things I take from Google, some of the things I take from Zambian uh, wa uh, watchdog, and some I take from African news. Then that's where I do all, most of my research. All right, uh, excellent. And um, wanted to find out which you have anything else you like to share in general uh, with uh, those of us uh, uh, connecting from uh, Africa to the diaspora, from um, Africa to the yeah, uh, most definitely, most right definitely. Versa. Most definitely, we want you guys to know that we love you and uh, we respect you. We want you to be on the continent. We know that you are our people and we know that we are one. Please, if you have got a chance to connect with Africans, we are here. Uh, we are, we are open-minded to work with you. We are open-minded to receive you. You need to know and understand that Africa is your home. Africa is your home. And if you want to move to a continent, you don't know where to or how to, Mr. Bomani here is there for that. This is the right man to assist or other African-Americans who have been on the continent. You can contact them. You can contact them and find more information about, about the continent. You understand? It won't, it won't hurt you just to, to consult. It won't hurt you to get information from these people. They have got the experience. They have been on the continent. They know the house and, 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 and what to do and what not to do. So if you are willing to move on the continent or you've got that interest of moving to the continent, especially the countries where he has said he has, uh, he has been to, then this is the right man for you guys to approach. And uh, Africa is, 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 is eager to, to receiving you guys. We love you. Don't listen to mainstream media. About, about Africans hating African Americans or African Caribbeans or African Europeans. That's not true, guys. That's not true. We love you and we want you to return and do something positive with us. Build this continent together because us on our own, we cannot do it. You understand? They are where you were taken. They are where you were. You have experienced some of the things that us Africans don't know about. And it will take us putting our minds together for us to, to build a great future, a good future for our kids and for us as well, 
and build this continent where it's supposed to be. Absolutely, brother. And uh, and that's it, man. And that's why I appreciate your energy that's uh, coming on so we can really talk about that. I know in between we have to talk about certain things, but what I want people to understand is the relevance of everything that we talk about from the beginning and what we talk about in the middle and towards the end is all relevant because we have to not only look at the positive situation, we have to look at all aspects of things because it's not like everyone wants to see us do this movement. The reality of it is we have people who don't. So we just made example of one person or a few types of people like that that don't want to see us have, making that move. And then now you see two brothers from the different spectrum I'm here in America, in Georgia, and our, our brother is here in South Africa, and now we're connecting. And that's what we're showing you. We're showing you this positive connections, how we're connecting together versus things that are in place to not get us to connect. All the lies you hear online as far as Black people in this part of Africa, this part of the world, this part of America don't like this person. And things like that, and it's like generalizing, you know, because it's. I'm sure certain people have issues with certain people all over the place, but what we're doing is we're feeding into negative energy when people are out there doing these things. So whether it's the global media or whether it's fake broke journalists like the Negro Pian or wannabe journalists, or whether it's this other level of information, people have to literally just learn to focus on the source and use critical thinking and process information because. Uh, we have been lied to as a black people, lied to all of our lives. So that's why we have to be even more critical about uh, what we believe in uh, and things like that. Uh, think about all of the history that we've been lied about and think about uh, the miseducation so we don't advance in society. And that's why it's important. That's why I have stacks of books here. And we have different things that now you can educate yourself because now you have books and things being written from a black or African or our roots and culture perspective to where it educates us and empower us. So those are the things that I talk about when we talk about the uh, connection. It's uh, we as a people have to be open to this. I mean, and I'm talking to all of us, learning what we have to learn together to, to compete because there is no, um, you know, there's no um, energy of people who realistically are gonna just uh, sit there and just, um, you know, just let things just go to where they are in life. People are going to compete. People are not just going to, other people are not going to sit there. And then if they see certain land example, they're going to buy the land. They want to develop it, do business. Uh, you know, uh, so trying to get us more in a progressive mindset is think about the future. So that's what I talk about when I talk about our community and I talk about business. And uh, let me see what our brother right here just posted. I appreciate you, brother. And somebody's asking me about travel mandates. And nothing I can really say about travel mandates, family, other than read travel advisory because they change so much. I don't want to give wrong information because I haven't read one of them in a while. But, uh, you know, when you travel to countries, you need your visa for those countries that need visa. And most important, uh, you need your COVID-19 test that shows that you had a PCR COVID-19 test that's uh, negative within the last three days. So that's the uh, main uh, requirement. And then there's health forms uh, to fill out. And you know, so countries that I know that you have to do these things are in Ghana, Senegal, the Gambia, and Tanzania. You don't need a visa for uh, for Senegal, but uh, you need the rest of the things for Senegal and all those things for the other countries. So it's one of those things where it's uh, too much just to, um, to really generalize, but that's the most important thing you do, family, is to be clear on what country you're into and what you're looking to do in the country and follow the regulations as far as the health and safety or requirements that all countries have now based on their embassy website or their main airport website since that's the main point of entry. All right, so let me get back to my brother right there. That's his YouTube channel, family. So show our brother lots of love, connect with him. And definitely, brother, you can always reach out to me if you ever want to talk or connect or work on anything. I'm just uh, connected with more of us around different parts of um, yeah, the world in Africa as we look to this. Try to find out how is tourism coming back in South Africa. You know, people have been asking me about tourism in South Africa, but at one point we couldn't go, so we ended up going to Tanzania. So uh, you have any good updates? Um, um 
right now the tourism sector in in SA is not that good, uh, you know, because of the COVID. And SA is one of the Af uh, few African countries which had strict COVID uh, rules, COVID regulations. It was it was very strict. So for now, like they have eased the restrictions, but the tourism uh, sector has taken a very bad hit. But you, people can travel, but it's very strict, man. It's very strict. You make sure that when you're traveling to SA, make sure all your documentation, especially COVID tests, um, are ready. Otherwise, you won't enter the country. Yeah. But if there is anyone interested in visiting SA, or like what Mr. Bumani said, you can contact him or you can contact me, then we can work on something. Uh, we need you people down south as well, not only concentrating in West or East Africa. We want to be seeing more people from the Americas, like our fellow brothers here in the southern part of Africa. Uh, south Africa is a very beautiful country. Just come for yourself and see. And not only South Africa, I would say all the southern African countries are very beautiful. Uh, people very friendly, uh, very easy to, to blend in, uh, very easy, social, accommodative people. And uh, when you come, uh, we'll give you tours and stuff like that. There are, there, are, there are a lot of tourism attraction that you guys will enjoy. A lot of things, a lot of places to go to, a lot of uh, buildings to see, a lot of people to meet. If you are that kind of person who hasn't seen a real village before, you can see that here in SA. So there are a lot of things to do, bro. Uh, there are a lot of things to do, and we are really, really eager. When I say we are eager, I really mean it. We are eager for you guys to come and enjoy yourselves here in South Africa. Yes, brother. Absolutely. That is what's up, man. And now uh, we're going to encourage people to, to do the same. And um, and that's how we get out of this uh, COVID-19 protocol situation is where you just you just have to do what you have to do. You have to just follow those uh, protocols and make your way into the, the different countries. And that's honestly what I've done. I've not done any magic. I tell people I just follow those protocols. Uh, it's I'm not going to say it's not that bad because, I mean, I remember just traveling, you know, you know, for mm -hmm. earlier where we didn't have none of these things so it's just the the, the new norm of what we have to deal with uh so uh just deal with the family and as far as just those things it's nothing i can really just talk about it gets very just uh, stressful when we talk about mandates and things like that uh it's really something where the person that you're traveling with or going to the country with or if you're not you just have to just research it it's all online and then process it and that's the best I can tell you to do. Um, I don't want to say anything um, that's going to discourage anyone or read anything online that may change tomorrow and things like that. So nevertheless, family, I appreciate um, everyone for joining us and I appreciate our brother for staying tuned. And I want to find out from him if there's anything else that he'd like to share uh, before we close. I'm not in no rush to close. You know, I always have time, but um, it's, uh, it's a later time in um, South Africa than it is uh, here in the East Coast of the US. So share anything that you want to share, brother, any last words? Uh, how people can get in touch uh, touch with you? Now you can get in touch with me, with me on my um, uh, uh, email, which is on my description on my YouTube channel. That would be the fastest way to get in touch with me. Uh, my last words will be, guys, let us continue to support people who are doing a good work. I'll repeat again, don't listen to lies from a house Negro in Europe. Support our brother, Mr. Bomani, doing a great thing. Believe you me, one day you will settle on the continent through him and you will have a story to tell. You will thank him. He's doing a tremendous job on the continent. Someone who has been doing something for 15 years, why will he change now? Think about that. 15 good years doing the exact same thing. Why will we change now? So don't listen to people who are full of negative energy, guys. Don't do that. Mr. Bomani is legit and he's doing something positive. Let us support him in all ways possible. It doesn't matter with strong, encouraging words, with finances, with whatever. As you have seen, he's doing a very, very good big project on the continent. And if you are willing and if you can, if you are well able to assist financially, please do, family. You are doing this not only for him, but for the future generation as well. Uh, and as for others, guys, let us not be a people who are going to embrace negative energy. We are better than that as a people. As black people, as melanated people, we are better than that. 
let us not do that. We are all about the positive vibes. We are all about connecting and building bridges. And that is what we need to concentrate. If you see someone doing good, especially on the continent, let us encourage someone to continue. Because, guys, it's not everyone. If it was for everyone, everyone would have been doing it. It takes guts, like I said. It takes courage. And this brother right here is a lion. He's a warrior. And nothing is going to make him stop. Not anyone, not any traitor, not anything. And we are going to connect him. We are going to connect with him. Like what he has done in other parts of Africa, he's going to do it now in the southern part of Africa. And we'll need the support of everyone on the YouTube platform, in our communities, and everywhere where there are melanated people. So thank you so much, guys. See you. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, so, family, uh, let us sign off and let me just uh, close some of these texts on the screen. And uh, yes, brother. So, uh, so family, um, my final words is, family, um, we have shared all the documentation of our Africa tours and investments and the business that we have and things that are like that on our website. So this is the uh, link. That's where our documentation is, and that's where our presentation is. And the last thing I want to talk to our brother before we leave is you mentioned something about an oversight and things like that. You know, so what I mentioned to people, your best oversight is to get an attorney and things like that. Uh, so family, um, the best thing to do when you're looking at documents and things like that, communicate with somebody that can let you understand it if you're not clear. I'm going to push that to the highest level. I've seen too many confusions with people not being able to understand and read contracts and not being able to just understand presentation and information. Very important in the flow of your daily business and the flow of anything that you plan on doing. Uh, so those are the things that we push, encourage, and we have organized. And that's what I started our business, our Bomani Technology and Business Enterprise, which is going to be the focal energy right there on the, the uh, beach. Um, Energy now, excuse me, the business center. I'm thinking about beach and all enterprising that we're looking to do at phase three, which I'll just talk more in another program. But uh, phase one has a nice uh, business center and we're looking to just really just organize things to where we can just have more of our presence on the continent and then run operations from there. So it takes time when you're putting your money together and when you're organizing things and you're trying to get things this to the highest level and you just, you know, it's not something where it's just a smooth road. You just have to just be a fighter, warrior, organizer, and have to keep on pushing. Uh, there's no rule books as far as repatriation making a move. So me and my uh, brothers and sisters and the people that uh, we organize with, uh, we just put together the best game plan and keep on moving. So, so far, so good, family. So uh, the website is updated with all the details, and I am available if you want to email or contact me, the best thing to do is just send me a message on WhatsApp and then um, using the, our contacts from the website or the link on WhatsApp on the website. And then just send me a message and this, we'll make some time to talk and go through everything, or whether it's you're looking to do a tour or you, whether you're looking to do a real estate business with us to get uh, land on phase one or phase two uh, or, what, or just looking to get general consultation or whatever it is. Let's reach out to me. I got your back. Uh, these are things that I can help you with literally. And we always just explain that the couple that we have living on the land, they moved to Ghana and literally been there based on the fact that they literally tour with us on the Ghana tour, December, 2019, and literally came back, got land through us and live in their house that's completed as of December, 2021. So literally showing you a two-year gap where in between that time, whether it's a visa residency, whether it's a tour, whether it's them getting their land papers and things like that, all of that was done within a two-year time frame from somebody connecting with us. Uh, so those are the things that we specialize based on this experience and based on this proving it. So you can always, um, when we do tours, you always see the flow of what we're doing on the Black Star Pan-African community while we're in Ghana. Uh, it's a important part of our journey to show our tour members what we have invested our earnings as far as our investment in this uh, africa tours and things like that because we have to invest our money in something black tangible and something that's going to just 
build something for us. So family, that's what we're dealing with. Uh, so appreciate everybody love and support. And we're going to keep it going. Uh, so you take care. Our family, uh, keep it strong and have a good day.